we've officially hit $150 million made on the Billionaire's Beginnings account. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how I got here and share with you some tips that I learned along the way. So the beginning of the grind was difficult because I started off with nothing. But after doing some events and grinding out our first ever business, which was the CEO Cargo Crate Warehouse, I was eventually able to save up $2.2 million and to buy the best business in the entire game, the Kasatka Submarine. Now I do suggest every beginner player to go after this business first and I'll actually leave a link to my guide in the description down below to show you how you could go from $0 to $2.2 million it's actually not as difficult as you may think but it is a grind and once we get there things become a lot easier because the Kasaka submarine allows us to do the ko preco heist which is the best way to make money in the entire game now my first few playthroughs took some time but we ended up making over 2 million the first time through and then of course the 1.3 to 1.5 million every time after that. And to this day, the KO Preco heist is by far the thing I do the most. I've probably made, let's say out of the $150 million we've made, maybe 75 million of it has all been from the KO Preco heist, if not more. But of course the KO Preco heist has the two and a half hour cooldown. So the next businesses I had to buy was the agency and the auto shop so that I had something to do in the meantime. Of course, with the agency, it allowed me to do payphone hits as well as the Dr. Dre contract, which pays out $1 million for about two to two and a half hours of work. Being able to do payphone hits at the time was also very crucial because we were able to do one every 20 minutes. And if you do the assassination correctly and get the bonus, you're making $85,000. So that really contributed to the overall money that I made. Now I'm sure other people feel the same way, but to be completely honest, the Dr. Dre contract, while it does pay out a lot, can get pretty tiring if you do it over and over and over. So realistically, I've only really done it a lot when it's double money, because at that point you're making great money with the contract. But aside from then, I mix it in here and there, but not too much. So the agency has tons of great ways to make money, but the next business that we bought was the auto shop. And that's strictly because of the auto shop contracts. They're essentially eight mini heists with varying payouts. They have two setup missions and one finale. They don't take long, anywhere between honestly 15, 20 to 30 minutes. So they're pretty quick. And when they are triple money, which has happened multiple times so far this year, they pay out insane amounts. More specifically, the union depository contract. When that contract is triple money, it goes from paying out $300,000 to $900,000. And I did a ton of those at the time. And I know a lot of people did a ton of those because it was, like I said, it takes about 20, 30 minutes to do and you're making 900K, which is great money for the time. And so getting those four businesses were very important at the very beginning. The CEO Cargo Crate Warehouse, the Kasaka Submarine, the agency and the auto shop, all four of those allowed me to make tons of money very quick and at any time I wanted. But as a solo player and as a grinder, we are limited with time. So it's important to also then build in some passive income streams, which is what I then decided to do. The first thing I got, of course, is the nightclub. There's two ways to make passive money with the business. The first one being through the wall safe. Every in-game day or 48 minutes, up to $50,000 is deposited into the wall safe, depending on how much popularity my nightclub has. And if it's maxed out, you get 50K and it slowly goes down in increments from there. The other way to make money is through the nightclub warehouse where you can assign multiple technicians to source different types of product. And then with time, you could then sell on that product for a profit. Now there is five in particular that make the most amount of money. They can make up to $50,000 every single hour. But with this part of the nightclub business, there is a catch. In order to assign a technician to these different types of products, we also have to own a corresponding business in the game. But with that being said, here are the five products to source. The first is cargo and shipments. You have to have either a CEO cargo crate warehouse, which I already had at the time, or a hangar in order to assign a technician to it. The next is sporting goods, which you'll need a bunker for, and I had to purchase at the time. Third is South American imports, which you'll need a Coca-Cola lockup, if you know what I'm talking about, which once again, I had to pick up at the time. It's one of the MC businesses. 
Number four is pharmaceutical research, which requires us to have a blue stuff lab. And then finally, cash creation, which requires us to have a counterfeit cash factory, which I also had to buy. So at that time, I not only bought the nightclub, not only bought technicians, I also got multiple businesses, three MC businesses, as well as a bunker. And of course, if we want to really maximize everything, you also have to get the equipment upgrade and the staff upgrade. So all in at that time, I ended up spending about $10 million on that entire investment, but it was 100% worth it because now the nightclub was essentially making $100,000 in passive income every single hour. So that was the first passive business to pick up. It was an expensive one. The next one was a cheaper one. It was getting the acid lab, which becomes available for purchase once completing the first dose storyline. You can pick it up for $750,000, but if you wanna make the most amount of money with it, we also have to get the equipment upgrade, which I did. And once that was up and running, I was able to then make about $100,000 every single hour in passive product which I was then able to sell on for a profit and secure in that money. Now the purchase of the acid lab marked an important point in the journey because it meant that we had pretty much all the businesses I needed to be successful. From then on, it was just about making things more efficient and increasing the quality of playing. So some other things that I picked up along the way were things like the master control terminal that allows me to access almost all of my businesses from one central location. I also got the Oppressor Mark II back before it became $8 million. I got the Sparrow, which really helped with the KO Pico Heist and stuff like the Hakuchi Drag for time trials. All of these different purchases made a huge difference because they made the process of making money a lot faster and easier, as well as just it allowed me to enjoy the game more. And ever since then, all I've had to do to make money is just capitalize on the best opportunities at the time. Each and every week on Thursday, there is a new event week, and usually it brings about bonus money for different businesses or ways to make money in the game. For example, at the time of recording this, it is currently double money on the hangar business. And now you could make millions and millions of dollars fairly quickly with the business. And capitalizing on something like that is so important. And it's something that really helped me along the way because I've done it in multiple instances. Depending on the kind of event week it is, we could be making so much money in a fairly short period of time. So that there in a nutshell was how I made my money along the way, essentially how I got to this 150 million dollar mark. But what's important to understand is the order that I purchased the businesses in and the way that I used them is the most efficient way to go about it if you are a solo player. So that's a tip for you guys if you guys are starting off your journey now. But also it's important to remember that at the end of the day, it's a game, we're supposed to have fun. And that's one of the main reasons why I got the auto shop so early. It wasn't necessarily to make tons of money, even though it did end up doing that for me, but it was more about having access to eight different mini heists that were tons of fun to play. But at the end of the day, the best tip I could give is make sure to set yourself up so that making money is simple in the game and it's easy and you don't have to work very hard to do it, but to really enjoy yourself because it is a game at the end of the day. So with that being said, the final thing I wanna say is thank you everyone for the amazing support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. It means more to me than you'll ever know. As for the Billionaire's Beginning series, Going forward, I'm pretty much gonna keep it the same way it's been for the past month or so. If new content comes out that's interesting and fun to do, I will make sure to cover it. But for the most part, I've tried to use this series as a way to inform people on how you can progress through the game and make things easier for yourself. Of course, I will do these types of milestone updates as we go, except I'm probably only gonna do them every 100 million or few hundred million I'm gonna keep grinding, keep sharing knowledge that I pick up along the way. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.